The Knicks weren't even supposed to be this good. They've been building for years to get a star to get over the hump. This year, they traded for OG Ananobi to pair with Jalen Brunson, but it'll all pop with Giannis or Zion. Then, all of a sudden, they got the two seed below Boston in the East Finals if they stayed healthy. So now, when they get that star, it is a wrap. The Athletic reports, the organization is still targeting this summer as the time to trade for the next big name. Why now? Because Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, and OG will be on big, fat new contracts. The new CBA makes it almost impossible for expensive teams to do trades then. You gotta go now. Also, did you know the Knicks have two draft picks this year and the possibility of four next season? You think Tom Thibodeau has a desire for six rookies? No, but what star is even available? Maybe Paul George? I saw a trade idea for Zach Levine. Not exactly the number one they're looking for. So what do the Knicks do now? They actually have a plan B here and no one's expecting it. What we do know is Jalen Brunson is a legit star. People have doubted him at six foot two his entire life, but he's one of those rare guys that gets better in big moments. His points jumped from 29 to almost 34 in the playoffs. In clutch games, he scores almost twice as much at the same efficiency. That is like MJ Kawhi stuff. But is he good enough to be the best player on a championship team? Yes, under the right circumstances, but the Knicks want a sure thing. So the first priority is to bring back important players. This offseason, they have big decisions on OG Ananobi, Isaiah Hartenstein, Alec Burks, and Boyan Bogdanovich. Hartenstein was a great defensive big, Bronson's pick and roll guy, but other teams can pay him more. So the big free agent is OG Ananobi. They finally ended the RJ Barrett era to get this guy. RJ was the number three pick pick behind Zion and John Morant, but never became a star. So they dealt him and Emmanuel quickly for OG and immediately went 12 and 2, 26 and 5 with him in the regular season. But he could actually leave. OG's max in New York is 42.3 million bucks a year. Most expect him to get around 35 to 40 million, but uh, Jeremy Grant got a max contract. Remember that? What if the Sixers swoop in with their max space and steal him? Oh, the Knicks can match, but it'll really hurt. The next decision is Julius Randle. It's easy for people to forget because he wasn't in the playoffs, but dude was amazing before his injury. 24 points, nine boards, and five assists, named an all-star for the third time in four years. But they might not bring him back. Julius is their number one trade chip to get that star. And in the playoffs, Randle is the opposite of Brunson. He goes from 23 points in the Knicks regular season to 17, down in every category. So if they don't think that he's a fit, they won't extend him, which will trigger a trade to not lose him for nothing. But who do they get? One consideration is Coach Tom Thibodeau. He is entering the last year of his contract, so if you're gonna move on, do it now. In fact, Lou Williams says, there's a problem. For Josh Hart, the first time he goes to the bench in game three is that just- That is crazy. It's insanity, man. It might be funny and a joke in games two and three, but at seven, mm. you can't tell me that he needs more rest. Tibbs being criticized is a fair criticism to some extent when yeah. it comes to these injuries. And he has a point. In the Pacers series alone, they missed Julius Randle and Boyan Bogdanovich before the series, Mitchell Robinson game one, OG injured game two, Brunson broke his hand game seven, and Hart played injured. Notice a pattern? If that continues next year, they will consider firing Tibbs, but as of now, they will keep him. The players, especially Jalen Brunson, love this dude, and they just got the two seat. So what Tibbs type star can they get? Well, the number one target is Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's a hard worker who plays defense first a perfect complement to their current roster and already has a finals MVP. Brian Windhorst even said he's on their radar, but who else might they get? Well, Paul George is an actual free agent, and if he wants to win a chip, New York is the spot. Or if he goes to Philly, maybe LA blows it up and deals Kawhi. Devin Booker is a CAA client, which matters. Kevin Durant, if he wants out. The Wolves might not afford to keep Cat. The Heat might be tired of Jimmy Butler. Zion rumored for years. But what do you notice about that list? So unrealistic. 
I mean, I have heard people talk about Mikel Bridges. Look, I know the Villanova connection is fun, but he doesn't feel big enough for what the Knicks want to do. Same goes for Brandon Ingram. I didn't put Joel Embiid on this list because he's about to get major help in Philly. So it turns out it's the worst possible time for the Knicks to get a star. And isn't that just like the Knicks? In 2010, they cleared cap space to land LeBron, but he chose Miami. They ended up with Carmelo one season later, but for years, the storyline was New York failing to get him a number two. But since Leon Rose was hired in 2020, it's been different. A patient buildup instead of paying some old dude with bad knees like Amari Stoudemire. They give smart, sensible contracts now and stockpile draft picks. New York has the third most tradable picks outside of the Thunder, Spurs, and Jazz. So who will they go after? At first, Donovan Mitchell. Two years ago, it was a done deal, but the Cavs swooped in and outbid them. The Knicks refused to overpay, and it worked, because Jalen Brunson became a star. So based on this new Knicks mindset, who do they get? No one. The most un-Knicks thing ever. They had no choice but to stay patient now and run it back. There's no realistic targets. The only thing would be to force a trade for Zach Levine or Bruce Brown. That's not who the Knicks are anymore. So here's what they say instead. We believe Julius Randle is enough. We went 12 and two with our full squad, plus 16.6 .6 net rating, a contender. But secretly, they can't wait to deal Randle the first chance they get at the trade deadline. All they need is some disgruntled star who's ready to move on. And remember, Randall has been unhappy at times in New York. He's argued with his teammates, pouted on the floor. Any time that he's mentioned in trade talks, it affects him mentally, so they can't afford to say they want to trade him. One hint the Athletic dropped, the Knicks will search for the next great player, but they also will hope not to disrupt the culture that helped most of their roster to career years. So who could that be? Giannis, obviously unhappy this year with all the dysfunction in Milwaukee, went through three coaches in 12 months, but his fit with Dame was somehow not perfect. If it's a disaster again year two, who knows what Giannis will want? Maybe Dame gets out. He said he felt lonely in Milwaukee, but no matter what they do, New York needs to contend with the rise of Anthony Edwards. Dude could win a title at 22 years old, but the best part is what comes out of his mouth. And finally went out and said what everybody was thinking.